So the first game we have on this episode is Papua. Designed by Javier Garcia and Diego Ambanez. Artist is Pedro Soto and published by Dever Games. So to give a quick summary of this game, it's basically a dice placement game where you are battling over different uh, spots on the board. Uh, Story-wise, it's like uh, you're going on the expedition to have the better expedition than the other players, I guess. <clears throat> but we don't read stories. So yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Oh, oh, oh I'm outnumbered now. <laughs> so uh, just to kind of give you an idea how the game is played, I won't go over all the rules, obviously, but basically, you're going to. There's a track that has uh, an energy. Every time you place a guy, you're going to spend energy, and the game's pretty much going to end when somebody runs out of energy. But as you're playing, you're going to on your turn roll dice and place guys out on these different spots. There's six different spots. And they're going to give you different things, right? So one of them is a hut, and that's going to allow you to get more dice. It's going to give you more people or meeples or whatever. They're expeditionists or something. Uh, it's also going to allow you to set your dice when you roll them. So kind of the way around works is this. I kind of went off on the, the hut thing, but I should tell you that. So the board is kind of set up each round, and you play just you round after round until somebody runs out of energy. Uh, there's a couple of other ways it can end, but this is the most typical. So you're going to reveal three expedition cards on one of the six spots. It's four expeditions. And then you're going to reveal some of these tokens on this other spot. Then you're going to reveal a, a field notebook card, which is kind of um, at the end of the round, it'd give you something if you collect it. Uh, but it also has some other information on it on how some of the other spots operate. And then um, whoever is has the least amount of energy gets to block one of these six uh, locations with an X and that won't, you can't put dice on it throughout that round. So when you start the round there in player order, which you're going to do via the most energy to the least energy, uh, the player will take up as many dice as they're allocated uh, through your, the, how far you've moved your hut or built up your hut or village or whatever it is. Normally it's not, what is it? You start with five, I think. Yes. And you can go up to 10. And so you'll roll your dice, uh, the six side of the die, they're just six sided dice, but the six side is not a six. It's actually a catastrophe. So it looks like a skull and whatever. And if that happens, then you, it, it's a single roll. You have to spend either a coin or an expeditionist, which is really bad, uh, to, you know, subject them to whatever trials and tribulations they went on during the expedition, right? They could just get bit by a snake and die. Uh, or you can pay money to whatever. Uh, anyway, after you to roll save them. to save them. Yeah. <laughs> so after you roll, you kind of pay for that. And then whatever of the numbers that you have, you can assign them to the locations of the board. But what, what's interesting is that none of the locations actually have a number associated with it. One at the beginning will have an X, meaning you can't go there, but the other five, you get to decide usually as the first player uh, or the first person who goes to a space, like say I have two twos, I can take two of my guys and put them on the logistics spot. And then I assign the two to it because I spent two twos. Now the other players will actually have to spend twos to put their guys there. So going first in the round allows you to probably set a lot of those spaces and maybe going second allows you to set one or two of them. And then usually third and fourth player doesn't really get to set much. Uh, but anyway, you can spend as many of your dice as you want to put guys out each guy that you put out is going to spend you energy or going to require energy cost. And we'll come back to why that's important <clears throat> other than ending the game. You can also spend coins to uh, modify the dice, either to reroll them or to go up and down pips on the die. And then, uh, then it's the next player's turn. They do the same thing. So forth, so on and so forth. Once everybody has their dice or people placed, then you're going to resolve each spot in order of the number. So you go to whatever was the number one and resolve it. Number two, et cetera, et cetera. But basically, there's a hut location will allow you to, as you upgrade it, you will get um, more uh, dice to roll. You will get more people. And you can also set dice before you roll them for the first, or on each round. So if you got seven dice, you might be able to set two of those, then roll the rest. So now you know that two of them won't be uh, catastrophes. Or they'll be at least the same number or whatever you're trying to do for your strategy. There is a the spot for the expeditions. There's like three cards that are out. And you're going to bid on those at the end of the round or, or when that's resolved. And basically you have a player screen that represents the three spaces and you put guys and coins behind each one. Uh, this is the one of the battling areas, meaning that like the huts, it doesn't matter who goes there. You can do the action. 
the uh, expeditions, if you put one, two, or three guys, you can bid on one, two, or three spaces. And then everybody reveals, and whoever's put the most stuff. Uh, kind of like Revolution, where it's like the guys work first, and if there's a tie, then it goes to whoever put the most coins. Uh, then after that, there's a uh, logistics area that has two or three tokens, depending on the number of players. And that, that's going to give you clear like uh, like victory points or more energy, things like that. Then you have uh, a funding area that will give you money, a fish area that will allow you to fish and get fish because you need fish as you spend area, you'll, or I'm sorry, as you spend energy, you'll cross these thresholds and you have to spend energy almost like feeding your people kind of deal. There's the field, uh, which both of those spaces, the money and the fish aren't combative. The logistics is, it's kind of like whoever has the most, then second most, then third most. The, um, the fish and the funding, everyone just gets stuff for going there. The last one is Field Notebook. That is a battling area where whoever has the clear amount of people there wins, or the clearest, the most, or whatever. So if you have four and somebody else has two, you the four person wins. If it's tied, no one gets it. And it'll have like a special ability on it that just happens. And you collect that card because of the end game scoring. Uh, and then you just do it over and over and over again. At the end of the game, there's a bunch of scoring stuff for like however many fish that you have left, however many coins, how much energy you have left. Uh, and then there, there's a lot of set collections. So those expedition cards that come out will be of different colors and you collect a set through um, two different ways, either a bunch of the same and then you can use like, so if you've got five red cards, it gives you a ton of points. Different animals, but yeah. Well, yeah, there are a bunch of different animals and stuff, uh, but you know, they're kind of color coded or whatever. Yeah. Either way, if you have four <laughs> state cards, it, it's whatever theme. theme. But if you you also get points for having sets of all of the different types. Right. Uh, so you can use the cards two different ways, or you you get to use them both ways for scoring. Uh, the field notebook cards, the more you have, the more points those will give you. They're kind of a progressive scoring, and uh, I think that's pretty much it for the scoring. And then just whoever has the most points is the winner. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Eric, let's start with you. What'd you think of this? Oh yeah. Actually, okay. before we do that, Matt, have you looked this game up? Yes. What do you think about it? It looks busy. <laughs> it looks busy. <laughs> there's a lot of going. There's there, lots going on. All right, fair enough. There's a decent amount to it. Uh, so uh, I do. I do like it. Uh, I like the. You have different ways to score points. You don't really have to go in a linear pattern uh, where there's only, you know, one thing you do for points. You know, you could go for cards, or you could get, you know, these points throughout the uh, playing the game. Uh, uh, you know, I do like uh, that you can mitigate your dice. It's, it's you, you are rolling dice, but it's, you know, there's not really a bad location to go because you're going to need coins. You're going to need fish. Um, you know, even going get cards, that might not be your main strategy, but it's not bad to go get, uh, go get cards as well because it is worth points. Um, uh, I like the artwork a lot and the theme uh, and the, comp the components were nice. Uh, like the little fish tokens are cut out. So I did like that part of it. Yeah, that, that is like a subtle thing you can do in board games. It's just, if you're going to make them chits, like mm -hmm. cut them out to the shape that they are rather yeah. than be a circle with just like everything's a circle. Right. Of course, yes. it's probably cheaper to do that. Yeah, definitely. Because they're uh, making the dies, the die cuts or whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyway, keep going. Yeah. Uh, one thing I didn't like <clears throat> is um, the, the person with the least amount of... Uh, uh, energy? It, yeah, energy. Uh, they get to X out... A specific area. You didn't like that? I didn't like it because the what, person really that, that is fantastic. <laughs> I, no, also, I, didn't like I it also didn't like it. Because you get to determine basically what you don't need, you you can prevent other people from getting. So it's like I don't want cards. So every other round I'm gonna X out cards. I'm gonna go for another strategy or or something that's you know, I don't need this round. I think it's pretty powerful actually. And in just in a lot of games, uh, uh, in a lot of games, it's it's there's a big benefit for going first, and that's how kind I kind of envisioned this game at first. But in this game, I think there's a, a big benefit for going last. That's it, that's interesting. I don't think it plays out that way, but uh, it might feel that way. I have to agree with Eric on this one, that I, and I think just to clarify, it's the mm -hmm. person who has the most energy who actually does the Xing out. It's the, uh, no, no, I think it's, no. the, it's, least it's the least energy. It's the yeah. least energy. Yeah. It's the most energy there further up on the track. They go first. Uh, oh, they get to play yes. all their dice first. No, that's right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, whoever has the least Which means amount of energy, they've used up, you know, they've done more actions basically than anybody else. 
mm-hmm. but they get the they, they get, get the, the power privilege of, of canceling uh, canceling out a action, right right. But the difference is they okay, so they assign an X to the expedition cards. Right. Almost right. always. Now, <laughs> right. Now, if that's not what you're trying to get points from, all the other players go for everything else first and set the the numbers and everything, and then you're going last, and so you have no weights. You're just at the mercy of what you roll. So if you have enough coins to mitigate it, that's fine. And I would say to an extent, but with the huts being able to set a die to whatever you want. And like I said, most of the time you roll, you might want out, like I might want to get a coin this round and maybe you won't, or or you can by using your coins if you have coins. But I feel that (laughs) there's really not a lot of times where I desperately need to go to this action spot and roll this. It's like, okay, well, I can make do of what I got. There's only five different actions or different places that you can go. You X out one of them. There's really only four places you can go. That's fine. I'll, I'll point out, though, that the last time we played, I did not block anything, and you beat me, like, by five points. And you blocked uh, out something every round. Right. That's why I said I don't – It's it feels that way, but I don't think in practice it actually works out the way you're thinking. Okay. Maybe, but I mean, we can we can disagree. I'm just saying that you know clearly in the last game we played, I did not mark out anything. I think maybe the first round because I just started last, right? Because it was random. But but you you did the whole game being first place, and you know you didn't. uh, You I guess you were still in contention, but you you didn't win. Uh, Last game, our first game. I was way up there uh, being first player every time because I thought maybe hey, th- th- there's usually a benefit to that. And you guys killed me in points. So I'm not saying that maybe that will be every case, but I, I do see a lot of a lot of benefits of being last versus being first. The, in practice, it may not work out that way that, that the same things are X'd out for the same reasons, but mm-hmm. I think the feeling is important so the feeling of the game is is definitely a big impact on on the enjoyment of the game but also i agree i think that maybe the issue is that the same person always gets to use the x if they are the mm-hmm. person who's always in the lead for energy or always uh has the least energy the least energy i should say right. then they will always get to place the x and that that it never it never moves around to someone else t- to get to decide where that's right. gonna uh, be affected by uh, so feeling wise yeah. i agree with you it's kind of like playing the uh the, the dungeon dragons board games where it's like the whole time i'm playing it i feel like i hate this game because it hates me <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's like mechanically it works out but feeling wise it's not very good so yeah i i think mechanically it it works but right, I, I would assume that you're thinking that maybe that should rotate a little bit more than what it because it, it does feel like the game the turn order almost never changes. Once it's kind of right. set Once, after one or two rounds, mm-hmm. everybody's kind of spending about the same amount of energy. Right. right. And it like it's not as worth it to leap somebody unless you're literally going to leap to fourth or first. Right. Yeah. So, Middles really doesn't matter that much. But and in practicality, it's very difficult to do. It because is because once you have that separation, <clears throat> everyone is spending about the same amount of energy every turn. Mm-hmm. So it's it's hard to actually make any ground. That's fair. So what did y'all think about the catastrophe thing? <laughs> well, I, I didn't mind it as much. I, I know there is a luck em- element to it. A lot of luck element to <laughs> it. <Massive. laughs> I, I feel that uh, I know uh, George got hit by it pretty hard, but I think he still did good for how much he got affected by it. He was he got, you to... got destroyed like three or four rounds in. Ask me how that felt. How that felt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was yeah, not fun. Was not that's fun, fair. Right. That's fair. Yeah, yeah I, it's an interesting mechanism because... It's a push your luck kind of mechanism too. It's, it's like, not a push any, push anything. Well, to an extent it is <laughs> no, it, you no. can mitigate it by you getting mitigate more what? coins. You, you cannot. Can, you, get, There's no mitigation. Coins. Like, okay, can't stop, right, is press your luck because yes. you keep going and then your, your, your abilities to move your pieces diminishes as you roll. This mm-hmm. is literally, what do I get? <laughs> I get destroyed. Here, yeah. I just is, opened a booster issue. pack and you got, you, you got the black Lotus and I got like the forest <laughs> right. that was like, or the Island that took the place of the rare sometimes. Yeah. That only, That's a very only early reason magic. So you can but... mitigate it is you can <laughs> gather up coins and have coins in hand and not use that for other purposes. You prepare for it and prepare for it yeah. as much as you can. Okay. 
But here's the thing. If you roll those, let's say you roll three of them, mm -hmm. they have to be, you have to pay a coin for each one when that happens. Right. So now you're losing coins. Mm -hmm. And you and lost then, those dice. And you lost and you those lost dice. dice. <laughs> and then it happens again the next round. Now you don't have the coins because you've just spent them because you had to. <laughs> right. So you're like, getting double double jeopardy. It sounds like personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a real life story. Yeah. 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 It was, it, it was not fun. It's it's interesting. I think that maybe you you should roll them and experience the you have to pay or something, but then you could do something to get the dice back. Mm -hmm. That's that's the really detrimental part about it. Is if you have five dice and I, I get it, the first roll of the game you're not affected by it, but the second roll of the game, if you roll, let's just say four out of your five dice is catastrophes. Oh, not only do you right. spend either four dudes or four gold, then or silver or whatever, then you have one dice or one die to put a guy out. And, and try to get coins. And, and then how many try to get, get coins. Right. Or just not go for coins and go for something else and then not have any coins for next round. So that could that could and I guess the the average of dice rolls probably will allow it to happen a lot. But if it does happen to you, the whole game is ruined for that person. Oh de definitely. Yeah. Of course if you're you're rolling sixes every time. But I, I mean I guess this is a dice. Or a game, lot of right? sixes. I mean yeah. so some of it's some of it yeah. you have to kind of expect mm -hmm. but you know, maybe for that one round, kind of it's expected, but it does really kind of snowball on top of you, possibly. So, right. yeah, I don't know. I, I I'm going to come off very negative about the game, and it's going to sound like just because <laughs> I had that experience, but it's not. It's mm. it's really not. Although it was a rough game. Yes. So let me start off by saying I love the art. Yeah, I the art's really good. The game mm. is gorgeous. It has even the little meeples have the the sort of oceanic pacific uh art sort of drawn onto them mm -hmm. uh, so th there were nice touches with the art and the the cards are gorgeous which makes it that much harder are you talking about like the uh, the vp <laughs> token the the victory point token yeah and, and the hut the hut meeple and the energy like, yeah yeah just certain meeples were actually decorated which was nice but the cards being so attractive and you want to get them but it's so hard to get those cards. <laughs> it is. And you don't end up with very many of them by the end of the game. So it just, it makes it more frustrating when you can't, mm -hmm. I think. And that was my, my difficulty with the game was that it seems like a set collection game. It seems like that's what you want to try to be doing, but mm -hmm. it's the cost related to, to going after that. And the number of times that someone can just say X, no. nope, you don't oh. get any cards. <laughs> right. Yeah. At least there's a second, there, it, it feels like there's really only two strategies to this game. And I'm not I'm not trying to bash it. I actually enjoyed this game a lot. Mm -hmm. But the the expeditions and then going after the logistic tokens that literally is like the only things. Oh, to get points. To get points. I mean, you'll get points from random stuff. I feel like you should have got more points for like for instance, you get a point for every three energy you have left at the end, which is yeah nominal. Uh, yeah, it shouldn't have been nominal right. because I had literally like 20 something energy. Right. And, Much more than that. And you were at person. zero. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I guess mathematically it probably does work out. But at the same time, like, I feel like if you're not doing that much stuff and you're still doing really well, I mean, you kick, you kicked butt. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, you sh your energy that's left should give you quite a bit. Maybe not one for one, but one for two should be probably better than one for three. I don't know. It's yeah. a good. It's a good question because the balance then would be, okay, I didn't do very much, so I sat back and did nothing, <laughs> then I get good, a bunch of points. Right. So that's a good point. But but that means you were efficient. Either way, it's not satisfying. No, that's true. Because you're doing less stuff throughout the game. Yeah. That makes sense. I wanted so badly to like this game because it, it was so attractive. Mm. Um, and I think that the reason I didn't is because there's so much luck involved. And I'm not just talking about the initial dice roll. Then when you go to get fish... You also roll dice to, roll. to see how many fish you get, yes. and when you go get coins, you roll dice to see how many coins you get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's I, random for each person, and you, every one of those spots you're guaranteed one for each guy that you put on there. You're guaranteed a few. Uh, amazing, right. but luck but. luck is going to have a, a play a part because some people will get more fish than you based on pure luck. Just on luck, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and then, definitely. And then also there are all those places where you compete, mm -hmm. and you have no control over what other people roll. You, you can't be competitive by doing a thing. You uh, just put out more people. On, on the competition part is just how, on how many how many people that you put in, uh, but never on the rolling on, on the competitive areas. Which, yeah. honestly, I think that... I, I Obviously, the game would have to be a lot different, but I almost wish that every area was a competition. Like, it, like, three of the six areas, you compete with other players. The other oh, three, you just go. I, I think that would be really hard, though, because <laughs> if you're competing... 
for wait, money wait, wait. each time or if you're competing for fish each time. Right. I, I had a hard time getting fish, but I would even have a harder well, time I'm sa- well, getting here, fish if, if I had to compete with you guys to get fish. It wouldn't <laughs> just be a switch the light switch and then make <laughs> right. them competitive. But yeah. like, stuff like Coimbra has like all these different areas that you're battling over. Yeah, sure. And you, I mean, you know, it so the, it's doable. I'm right. saying the game would have to be, be a rewarded a little bit, but right. but I'm saying like it would be neat if each area was competitive, but in different ways. Mm, like I like, yeah, like I like, <laughs> I like that one area is a bidding area, and another area is clear is like you know a tiered like whoever gets first, second, third, and another area is whoever is clearly the most takes all. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's a neat concept. I like that. I mean, I, I guess now that I'm thinking about it, what else would you do? Right for the other areas, but. You know, or maybe maybe like for every guy that you put in this spot, you roll a die, and whoever rolls the highest to- combination, so more guys, you roll more stuff, like stuff like that. Like I think it would be neat. It's okay that I guess not every one of the spaces are competitive, mm-hmm. but I those are the ones that I think enjoyed I enjoyed the most because otherwise it's just random worker placement. Exactly, yeah. you need more payoff. Right. Yeah, and, and like having them be competitive, and you go after it, and you beat somebody over it, and then you get a lot of stuff for it. That's a cooler, like feeling than just you everybody know, get something. With a Agricola, yeah. I go somewhere. If you went there first, I'll go somewhere else. And this, it's like I want to go there. I didn't roll that, <laughs> you know. Right. And that's fine that's because there's other spaces, but you know, if it's going to be worker placement, I don't. Know. If it's what, going to be so much random, then the length of the game becomes an issue. Yes, that's true. That's fair. Which, which I feel this game. Uh, it's a good you know, length. Yeah, maybe an hour and a half. Hour and a half, yeah. yeah. So the length of it's not too bad to have enough luck in it, but but I see that, you know, the more luck that you have in a game, the shorter the game that you want that game to be because you yeah. don't want to get into something where you just get destroyed by luck and you have to kind of charge through it. Yeah. You don't want to be that middle player who doesn't have the most energy <laughs> or the least energy. Right. You're just lost yeah. in limbo. You don't get to go first and decide everything. You don't get to go last and decide what to X out. Yeah. yeah. Although I did like it with four players more than three because there's more people to compete in those areas. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it ever played well, as two players. No. It has specific I rules, I think, two. for two, but we well, just typically do not play two player versions of three and more player games. Hey, uh also uh I did like the aspect of you know, it does matter wh- which areas you might uh make going first. Um saying like uh, you know, putting your two dice in a specific spot, you know, that is gonna go first, which might end up giving you coins so you can bid on something on, on the cards in a you know on round four right you know, and you might see dice. that somebody has a ton of coins or or you don't get to see their components but you might know that they got like 10 coins last round right and so you if you went first next round you could get some coins before that happens or or you can do it to where that doesn't like you bid on the cards before the coins even happen well, mm-hmm. no, I guess you would want to do it the other way because you were broke. Yeah. They're not. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> or, yeah. you know, you might have the huts go off to get you more guys so you can bid with those guys when yeah. you get cards. You know, so, so that, that kind of aspect, uh, you know, not a lot of people might think about, but it is a, a good little I You know, we've addition. talked about it, but I didn't remember it. Mm-hmm. And it makes a lot of sense. I do like that idea that the order of operations does matter in most cases. Absolutely. Right. That was one of the better mechanisms yeah. that was introduced in the game. That's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's a good game. Do you ever, did you ever play their other? They have a lot of other games, but um, Michael Strogoff. No, I haven't played that one. That was pretty good. I'd like to. Yeah. Like, anyway, Matt, Matt, what's it look like now? <laughs> what the game? Yeah. After after you hear our crazy stuff. Busy. Uh, busy. Yeah. Busy. It's yeah, busy. It's yeah. busy. It still looks busy. That's fair. It's not too bad once you actually like. No, it's pretty. It's pretty is, easy to learn. There, there's yeah. not a lot, a lot to it. I mean, there's, you know, you still have to, uh, plan as much as possible in a dice game but uh you know you you have to get enough fish before you you know hit certain areas you need you need money for you know changing your dice or for the catastrophe so you do have to plan but yeah. there's not you know it's not uh pre- it's not deep i think it's a good point if if by saying it's busy you also mean it looks sort of more complex because it's it's a dice game and it's family weight really yeah mm-hmm. no it it just means there's a lot you can do I guess okay. is what I just mean by busy. Uh, you got a lot of choices. Um, y'all are pretty, what I pictured it to be, y'all are pretty much resonating. Uh, it looked luck-based. 
yeah. but it is a shorter game. I, you yeah. know, I think it's, it says on the box it's 75 minutes, which is an odd time for a board game to put on there. But uh, Maybe they actually tried to say an accurate time. Yeah. Uh, that or they thought well nine, maybe yeah, 90 well sounded like it turned off people to it or something. I don't yeah. know. So. And, and maybe we are judging it more harshly based on sort of a gamer game when really it is meant to be more of a luck-filled family game. It's sure. just, if it is then the busyness of it makes it difficult because each one of those spots kind of has its own rule set just in, in a right. small way in a small way yeah. right so it would be harder to learn as a family maybe just starting out right sure well i'm a, the the biggest thing i'm a fan of is the fact that one it is gorgeous and the components are awesome they do a good job with that stuff yeah. mm -hmm. the and i like that it just with michael strogoff there's a lot of game in that small box cuz it is mm -hmm. it is not a ticket size you know ticket to ride style box it's right. like a um like a smaller, like, you know, eight by eight kind of deal, or maybe 10 by 10. It's a couple inches smaller and it's real thin. And uh, there's a lot of stuff in it. It's the same size as the Michael Strogoff game. So there's a lot of, I like the game where it's like you have a smaller board, but there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have a small board with a lot of cool stuff than this massive board that literally is just art. Mm -hmm. Even though art's cool. Just taking up more space. <laughs> yeah, but I mean. Just to take up space. Right, just to take up space. So anyway, uh, final thoughts. Anything else you want to add before we move on? Just that the art is, is so nice that even with the feeling of being hard done by the game and, and feeling that I wasn't in control, I think as a first impression, I'd like to play the, I'd still like to play the game more. I, I just Maybe you had a bad run. Maybe I did. And, <laughs> and maybe there are ways that I could play better. Maybe there are ways I could mitigate better, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the game itself, the, 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 the game draws me in with that art so much that I still want to give it a few more chances. That's a good thing. Yeah, we'll play it again for sure. I, I liked it quite a bit. Yeah, I liked so. it, how it intertwined, uh, you know, the auction element, uh, set collection, worker placement to an aspect, too, um, and, and dice rolling. So I liked it uh, overall, yeah. Uh, big thumbs up for me. Yep, thumbs I, up for me. I saw cards with bugs on them. Looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Well, anyway, that is Papua.